friends, it's Christy. Welcome back to my channel. Today I'm going to be making a card using Trinity Stamps, Bunny Burrow, and Sleepy Hollow. So I've stamped out the images I'm using on some Nina Solar White cardstock with Lawn Fawn Jet Black ink, and I'll be coloring with my Copic markers. I'm starting with the bunny burrow itself, which to me looks exactly like a hobbit hole. If there's any fellow hobbit or Lord of the Rings fans out there, um, this just totally takes me to that place. So for that, I'm going to use G14, G16, G17, and G19. I wanted a green combination that had a little bit of a blue tone to it. Um, just because the pattern paper that I'm going to be using has um, a little bit of a bluish green in it. It's not this exact um, shades. It's a little bit duller, but um, it still is kind of in the same hue. So I started with the G19 at the bottom and then I blended up with the G17. And these markers, to be honest, they don't tra transition that well between each other on the first layer. Um, I don't pull them out that often because of that. Um, they just don't seem to, like the G17 almost looks darker than the G19, if you notice that. Um, it's just kind of odd. But anyway, on the second layer, everything does kind of smooth out and start to come together. So I will be doing a second layer off screen. I decided not to include it in the video since this was going to be a longer one already. Um, and it's just kind of time consuming because it's such a big image. But I moved on now to the G16 and basically I just broke the Hobbit hole or bunny burrow up into quarters. So I used about um, one color per like quarter of that image. I've moved on to the G14 and now you can see I really have to work to get that to transition from the G16. Those darker three shades are almost identical. It's just, I don't know. I don't know what's the deal with if I just got some weird markers or if everybody's are like this. But anyway, um, I, I just have to work a little bit harder to get that transition to kind of fade into each other. And then, like I said, on that second layer, things do smooth out quite a bit. And there you can see what I mean. It's still not perfect, but I'm going to do something to mask that in a little bit. But first I need that ink to dry. So I've moved on to the grasses down at the bottom. I kept those darker two shades and then added in the G28 just to um, make that something a little bit different and a little darker. Um, I did go over that about three times just to really beef that up and make it look separate and not like it's, you know, the same grass that the bunny burrow is made of. So once that has dried, I'm going to go back over that bunny burrow and add in some dot detail. I'm going to concentrate it a little more heavily down at the bottom, but I'm going to take it almost all the way up. And um, that's just going to make it look really like it's made of grass and that it's not like a smooth fabric or something like that. You know, we want there to be some texture there because it's made up of tiny little grasses. So um, I used all three of those shades and just went over those. Um, sometimes I even go right over top of the previous dots just to kind of help them get pushed back a little bit more and blend all together. So now I'm moving on to the door and I'm going to use E44, E47, and E49. I'm starting with that E49 and I'm kind of outlining each of those boards. I'm also going to add a little shadow on the left side of that heart cutout. And then I'm going to go back on those boards and just add some little squiggle marks and some dots to give it some wood grain texture. So I'm just kind of like um, holding my marker very lightly using light pressure and just kind of skating the very tip of that marker across the surface there. Then I'll also add a little bit of shadow coming up from the bottom edge. And then I'm going to blend all of that out with the E47. 
So I'm just going to bring that up from the bottom and color right over all of those little lines and things that I added so that they're just a little bit more softened into the wood. And then I'm going to um, blend that out even further with the E44. And I was realizing that I was going to need to add in one more shade, so I just left some space for that. I went up um, almost all the way to the top, just left a little bit of room there to bring in the E43. And I'm just going to finish with that one by filling in all the rest of that white space. Now that little heart, you could color that in if you wanted um, and just make it like a decoration like that's carved on the door or something. I wanted it to be like a little cutout window, so I went ahead and left that blank. Um, but I am going to take that E44 and also color in the frame for the window. For the stones around the door frame, I'm going to use W1, W3, and W5. And instead of doing like a traditional light source with shadows and highlights, I'm just going to put that W5 kind of here and there, a little bit different on each of the stones. And that's going to make them all look just a little more realistic because stone usually has some variations in it. It's not all just one solid color. So then I'm just going to blend out the edge of that with the W3 in whatever direction, you know, is opposite and save some room there for that W1. And then I'll just fill in the rest of that white space there. And I think that just gives it a little bit more of a natural look to it. I'm also going to take that W1 and just fill in that little sliver of space between the door frame. And then I'm going to color the stone path exactly the same way. Just, um, you know, adding that W5 sporadically here and there. And then, you know, continuing coloring darkest to lightest to fill those in. I wanted to put a little bit of a glow in that heart cutout and also in the window because I figured even in the daylight, it's probably pretty dark down inside that little hobbit hole. So I used Y000, Y11, and Y13, and I just added a little bit more of that darker glow toward the bottom and then blended toward the top. And then I'm moving on to the little chimney. And for that, I'm going to use C1 and C3. And just add a little bit of that C3 first and then blend that out with the C1. And then I'm also gonna color my raccoon with those shades. I did add in the C0 as well. Um, I often like to color inanimate objects with the cool grays and animals with the warm grays, but the exception is what I'm going to use uh, when I want something to look black, since he's going to have some black on his body. Um, I prefer the cool grays for the black for whatever reason. So um, with raccoons and things like that that have um, black on them, skunks as well, I often will turn to the cool grays. So I'm using the C3, C1, and C0 for the parts of his body that I want to be gray. Just doing some really quick and easy shading there from the bottom to the top. Since he's facing forward, pretty much the light source is just like at the bottom of each part of his body. And then I added a little bit of that C0 on the inside of his ears and on his belly. And then I'm moving on to his darker stripes. I'm going to keep that C3, but add in the C5 and C7. I'll keep that C7 down low, especially on the patches around his eyes, because I don't want his eyes to get lost. And then I'll um, also add that on the bottom of his stripes on his tail. And then I'm blending up with the C5. And I like to stop right about the point of the eyes because I want those to stay as light as possible. So when I go over the edge of that C5 with the C3, it's going to lighten up even more right over those. So they're still very clearly visible. And then I'll just fill in those white spaces on his tail with that C3 as well. So next I wanted to start to pull in some fall colors um, since we're 
Um, now in fall, I thought I would try to add some little leaves and the pattern paper I'm going to be using is fall themed as well, just to tie in the season. So I used YR23, YR24, and YR27 to color a leaf and also the doorknob of the Hobbit hole. And I went over that leaf a couple times and then I'm moving on to my fox. And for that, I'm using YR12, YR14, and YR18. This is my go-to combo for foxes. So I'm using that YR18 down at the bottom of his tail, and then also where it would be casting a shadow where it's wrapped around his body. And I did a little bit of a flicking motion just to um, not make that line so straight, which makes it a little bit harder to blend out. And then I also added it to the sides of his head and into the crease where his muzzle is. Um, and then I blended that out with the YR14, just doing some little flicking motions to pull that color up towards the top. I did also put a little bit of a shadow right under his um, chin where it would be overlapping his tail. And then I'll just fill in the rest of that white space with the YR12. I'm going to leave his face and the tip of his tail and the inside of his ears white for now. And then I'll use YR000 for those just to add a little light shading um, so it still mostly looks white. I added a little of that to the hedgehog's belly and the inside of his ears. And now moving on to the rest of his body, I'm using E50 and E51 for that. I'm just adding a little E51 for the shadow and then blending that out with the E50. And I will do a double layer on him as well. And then for his spikes, I'll use E55, E57, and E59. And on the first layer, I'm just going to um, color it normally. So I'm just putting that darkest shade close to his body and um, putting like a little bit of a shadow there where his um, body would be casting a little bit of um, darkness onto his spines. And then I'll blend that out with the E57, just doing little flicking motions toward the outside edge. And mainly right now, I'm just trying to get a smooth of blend as possible, although it's not like crucial because of the next step that I'm going to do. And then I'm finishing with that E55, just filling everything in. And then I'm going to go back with each of those shades and I'm going to do some dark flicks to kind of accentuate the spines and just kind of um, just give him a little bit more texture there. I'll use RV10 to color in the raccoon's nose and then I'll give the hedgehog and the fox some rosy cheeks. And then I'm going to finish up my last couple of leaves and my little bug there. I'm using Y13, Y15, and Y17 and coloring the face and every other stripe on the bug. And then I'll also color in a leaf. Um, I think this bug could be like a dragonfly or a lightning bug or even a bee if you wanted it to. But I just wanted to use him to add a bit more um, pops of color on the card. So I colored him uh, yellow and red, which um, probably is not occurring in nature. <laughs> but I just thought it would give me another um, little bit of color. So I used um, YR07, YR09, and R29 for his reds. And that is because the pattern paper that I'm using has a really orangey red in it. And so I wanted that to be represented. And I did another one of the leaves. And I added a little of that YR07 to that leaf on the far left. Um, it's just because it looked so dull and then um, I decided to color the flowers on the top with that same red orange combo um, just so there would be like a nice bright pop there towards the top of the scene as well and then I'm going to take a black Sakura jelly roll pen and just go over the eyes of the raccoon 
Just fill those in and then I will trim all of these images out with their matching dies. I did want to show you this die that comes in the set and it lines up with the stones on the outer side of the door. There's also one for the stones in the path. Um, I thought it just embossed the stones, but it actually cuts out that whole portion there with the door and the stones and everything. So I was not expecting that. Um, but it's totally fine. I'm just going to fit it back together. No big deal. The die also does cut out the window inside the window frame. So I'll take care of that later. Um, but for now, I'm just going to trace that hole with um, a pencil and then I'm going to color that in. I used the same three marker shades that I used for the hedgehog's spikes just to add a little bit of a shadow in the background. Most of this is going to get covered up anyway, but I just wanted there to be a little bit of something as a backer. And then I'm going to take my Cutter B scissors and I'm just going to trim that out. And that is going to fit in that space behind the door so that I can leave that door open. I'm moving on to my focal panel and I used a piece of pattern paper from the Echo Park Happy Fall 6x6 pad for the grass. I trimmed that down with the Lawn Fawn Mushroom Border. I used the grass part of that die set um, to give me that nice little hill shape. And then the background panel was a piece of MFT's Snow Cone cardstock that I die cut with the a2 stitch rectangle stacks set to. So you saw me tape that window in place with a tiny bit of post-it tape and now I'm adding a little bit of glue to either side of that hole just making sure that my fox is going to fit in there and then I'm going to um, back that hole with that little um, shadowed piece. Then I'll add the stone border. I'm going to just fit that into the piece that it's cut out from, just like a puzzle. It's going to go right back where it came from. Um, but then I realized uh, my fox actually wasn't going to fit anymore like that, so I actually needed to add him before that glue was dry. So I'm going to just make sure that I have him positioned correctly, and then I'll add some liquid glue to the back of him get him situated where I want him. I want to make sure that he is, you know, completely visible when that door is open. Added a bit more liquid glue and then I'm going to line him up in that space and I'm going to shift him just slightly to the right because that door doesn't open completely. There's like a tiny little tab that's going to cover up just a little bit of that and I didn't want it to be covering up his face. So I'm going to fold that door open on that tab so that it just adheres where that liquid glue is. And I'm going to leave that um, bent up like that so that it doesn't accidentally get stuck if there's any remaining liquid glue that's kind of seeped out of the edges. And then I can grab that focal panel and figure out where I want that positioned. And then I'll add some more liquid glue to the back of that and I'm going to adhere it uh, kind of high up on that hill because um, I wanted there to be room down in front for my other critters. So I'm going to just press that down into place and then I can grab the rest of my images. I'm going to take the raccoon and adhere him over on the right hand side and I'm going to have him just hanging off the edge of the card a little bit. Sometimes I like to do that. I feel like it just makes the scene look um, larger, like there's more um, beyond, you know. Um, and then I'm going to add the hedgehog over on the right hand side. And I put him up a little bit higher because I need some place to put my sentiment still. So I figured I could do that down on the bottom right. I added the stone pathway right in front of the little hobbit hole so it's leading up to the door and then I've got this little bug. I'm going to put him over in the top left corner and then I've just got those three little leaves so I'm just going to figure out where I want those and add those here and there. And I'm making sure to turn those in all different directions so that it looks like they're being tossed about by the breeze. 
And I ended up deciding to put this yellow one down towards the bottom right, just so it balances off the little bright bug on the top left. I pop that in my Misty so that I can stamp my sentiment and I'm using an MFT set that might be retired. It's called Beautiful Day and I'm stamping that in Lawn Fawn Noble Fur Ink. The two Trinity stamps sets that I use today don't have any sentiments in either so I needed to pull a sentiment from some other set and I really liked these sentiments. So I stamped out Keep Life Sweet and then um, for the inside of the card I used a piece of sticky note cardstock for the base and I'm stamping in Sunflower Ink and I'm using the Bunny and Two Flowers from the Bunny Burrow stamp set and then sending you a handmade hug which is also from that MFT Beautiful Day stamp set. I've trimmed down three more pieces of pattern paper from the Echo Park Happy Fall uh, 6x6 set and I layered them exactly how I wanted them and ran them all together through my die cut machine with the largest of the A2 stitch rectangle stacks set to and that way all of those stitching lines are going to line up perfectly. So I'm adding this colorful plaid flat to my card base that's going to cover up most of the background. It's going to leave just a little hint of that uh, sticky note cardstock showing through on the outside edges. And then I'm using this wood grain piece to go across the center. And I went ahead and used the part that had the hole cut into it because I knew it was going to be covered up completely anyway. And then I've got this really pretty vibrant fall leaf print and I added that um, vertically across the center. I added some foam tape to the back of my focal panel and then I'm going to pop that up in the center of my card. Just use those stripes on that plaid background to make sure it was nice and straight. And as a final embellishment, I'm going to add a little stardust stickles in just a few little places. I'm going to add it to that warm glow inside the heart cutout and also inside the window. And um, I wanted to make sure that that door stayed open, so I grabbed my craft pick. I remembered it this time! Um, and just used that to help me get that door open and leave that propped. Um, I added some stickles to the little bug's wings and to the three leaves and then I put a little dot in the center of the three flowers on the top of the hobbit hole. And that is going to complete my card for today. I'll lift that up so you can see how the stickles catches the light and we can check on our sleeping fox. And I'll give you another peek at the inside as well. So I hope you guys enjoyed this one. If you did, please be sure to give the video a thumbs up and subscribe and ring that notification bell so you don't miss a thing. I'm posting new videos every Monday, Wednesday, and Friday right now. So you definitely want to make sure that you're being notified. So if you'd like to keep watching, here are two extra videos I thought might also interest you. You can click on either one of those to check them out. And if you're interested in any of the products that I use today, you can find those linked in the description bar below the video. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you all have an absolutely amazing day. Bye-bye.